Hello and welcome to this quick video from Blender HD. My name is Jonathan Lampell, and this video is going to be a follow-up video to the last one, which we talked about rope and noodle type physics inside of Blender using curves. And so this time I'm going to touch on something similar but very different, and this is going to be all about chains. So first of all, let's make a chain really quick. So let's just delete this cube, add a mesh torus, and then down here, let's take the major segments down to 10 if it, they aren't already for you. So make sure that that's set to 10 or, you know, however dense you want it. But you don't want too much geometry, of course. So let's go into edit mode. And then with all of the right side here selected, let's bring that out a bit. And then also select everything, hit S to scale, and then 0.25. So now we have a little tiny ch chain uh, just one little link. And then of course if we want a whole bunch of these in a row, the choice is the array modifier, and now you can see we can make a whole bunch of them. 20 to be exact, and they're all offset exactly one object length apart. But we want them to be interlocked, so let's bring that down to 0.6. And the last thing we need to do is make them offset rotate 90 degrees consecutively. And so let's go ahead and add a empty this is the easiest way to do it. And then without even doing anything with the empty, select this object again, press object offset and choose empty. And what that does is when we move this around, it's going to offset those arrays relative to the empty. And this also works for rotation. So let's rotate that 90 degrees. Oh, I think I said 901, 90 degrees on the X axis. There we go. Now, if we apply this modifier, we can delete that and now we have our nice chain. So we made that relatively fast, but this won't quite work for physics just yet. You see, if we add a mesh plane, scale that up a bunch, and then go to the physics tab here, we can add passive, add active for the chain, but you can see it's all acting as one big stiff object uh, with the center of mass right at the origin point. And that's not quite what we want. We want each of these to be interacting with each other. And to do that, we need to make them separate objects. So let's go into edit mode and then just hit P, separate by loose parts. And now each of these loose objects is a separate object. So with all of those selected, let's go back to the tools and then set origin to center of mass. Because remember, the center of mass in our physics calculations is going to be the center of origin. And I might need that option later on, so I'm going to right click and pin to the toolbar. So now when I go back to physics, I can still have these options later on if I need it. Alright, great. So you might think at this point that we're ready to go, but not quite yet. Because you see what happens when we play this back, they all explode and fall apart. And the reason this is happening is because our uh, collision shape is set to convex hole. And what that looks like is basically imagine a shape of the outside of this object. So it's not taking into account that there are any holes in our mesh. It's just looking at sort of the silhouette or the, uh, the volume of it as a whole. So according to the physics, there are no holes in the mesh. So we just need to change that from convex hole to mesh, and we should be good to go. So if we play that back, oh, I forgot one thing. We have to do that to the selected object, or the active object as it's called, and then copy from active. Okay, cool, so it's working pretty well at first. Uh, one thing you might run into is if these uh, chain links are too close together, say they might be less than four centimeters apart, you can turn that down. But of course, always remember to copy from active when you're done making changes to one of them. Okay, cool. So it's working well, but it's breaking apart, and we don't want a chain that breaks, because that's not very useful. So let's go ahead, and I'll demonstrate this point a little bit further, and then we can go ahead and fix it. So I'm going to uh, Shift S, cursor to selected. Then I'm going to add a plane, or excuse me, a sphere, right there. And this is going to be our anchor object. So I'm going to select these two, Control J, join them together and then add passive, uh, make sure it's set to mesh, 
All right, so when we play this back, we have a chain that works, but it falls apart. Let me move that up a bit. And we can see it it's prone to breaking. Let's take a little bit closer look. And you can see right at the point where it breaks, excuse me, um, right there, it goes from being connected to being separated in just about two or three frames. And so what's happening is there are not enough calculations to where it's saying, okay, it's it's connected, it's connected, it's connected, but then all of a sudden it's just not connected. Um, it was going too fast to register that this is hitting that is essentially what's happening. So we need to increase how many times it calculates per second. And we can do this in the world settings here for the rigid body world. Right now by default, it, the steps per second are set to 60. And you can increase this. Uh, first I'll go 120, but I don't think that's going to be quite enough. So that did work for now. Uh, if you do anything more extreme, I would recommend like 240. That usually works really well. Uh, and of course it does slow everything down a little bit, but of course um, it'll increase the quality quite a bit and so it's a good trade-off. And for the most part, uh, rigid body physics really are pretty fast, so not anything you should worry about. So thanks for watching this quick video. I hope you learned a lot. It's really easy to make chains. Uh, no need for any sort of uh, complicated constraints or anything like that. Just once you can set it up, it works really well and no need to do anything else with it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.